Friends, and welcome to another edition of Transformational Astrology. I'm Henry Seltzer. And of course, we want to talk about the new moon that's coming up in just a couple of days' time. We're going live here. Um, actually, it's Friday as we speak, but it'll be tomorrow when the new moon hits. So let's take a look at the chart. We always want to look at the chart for these new moon lunation events. Uh, they are powerful times. And you should be able to see the chart now as we always show it in the Time Passages software. <clears throat> and we think that the Time Passages software provides a nice, uh, easy user interface for both experienced and beginning astrologers because you can mouse over anything in the chart. For example, you can mouse over this Jupiter that I see up here at the top and see what it is and then right click, I'm sorry, left click and get uh, a paragraph interpreting it. And you can also right click and it tells you the parallels and we see that it's actually in addition to being at about the same degree of both Pluto and Saturn, it's also parallel to Saturn and Pluto, being at 22.6 in a minus direction, and Saturn is at 22, or 21 rather, 0.5, Pluto 21.8. So it is about a degree off, and so it adds to the fact that it's a semi-sextile to Pluto, that it's also parallel to Pluto. So these are the kind of informations that you can get out of the software. And <clears throat> it does remind us in this particular case that we have a very strong Pluto happening in the sky right now. And let me <clears throat> go into that a little bit further. Uh, how many ways can we find strong Pluto? We know that Pluto is absolutely very closely parallel to Saturn as we just showed. This is 21.8 uh, versus 21.5. We know that also uh, Jupiter being at 23 degrees, Eris being at 23 degrees of different signs, they're making a perfect trine with each other right now in the sky. They both beam into this Pluto 23 degree mark very strongly. And anytime you have Eris, even though Eris is rather unknown uh, in Western astrology, it's only beginning to be utilized by astrologers, but it's, it turns out to be quite powerful in charts, as you can see for yourself anytime you take a look at a natal chart and you find a strong uh, Eris connection to a planet in that natal chart, you'll find that planet emphasized. Good example is uh, Eris with Mercury, it's a writer. Eris with Saturn, it's a, 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 a student of fairness, one, one that uh, can't stand to see injustice, wants to see things uh, in the most ideal version of society, which is represented by Saturn. And you can see these things routinely when you look into people's charts, just like you would with any other aspect. You know, you can do the normal aspects of like you say, oh my gosh, there's a Neptune Venus in this chart. That means, and you know what Neptune means, you know what Venus means, you know how that might affect them because it's all standard. Uh, you can read it in so many standard texts. Eris has just as much information to offer, but it's uh, just coming in so people don't always know about it. Unless you read my book, my book has a cookbook section in the back, just to give a little plug for my book called uh, The 10th Planet which is about Eris. Okay, so getting back to the chart itself, uh, we know that there's so much Pluto. I don't think I detailed all of the things. Um, I detailed most of them. Uh, but the fact that the full moon is, is vaguely trine, you know, the full moon being in Taurus, an Earth sign, is trine, this position, especially of Saturn. So that brings in a greater prominence of this Capricorn conjunction between Pluto and Saturn. And the Mars itself is contributing as well. Mars is coming through rather quickly, of course, as Mars and when all the inner planets move rather quickly. Uh, happens to be opposite Jupiter exactly in this new moon configuration. And we want to pay special attention to this configuration of the new moon, even though it's a very transient position of Mars. The fact that this is the configuration of the new moon kind of imprints it for the 30 days still to come in this cycle. That's why we make such a big deal about it. The full moon, too, and even the quarter moons, we can talk about how that's developing this lunation cycle of 30 days that Dane Rudyard talked about in his book, The Lunation Cycle. Anyway, um, to say that uh, Mars is moving through is one thing, but to say that it's in the configuration of the new moon, we can understand that it actually makes a very strong statement about the next 30 days to have so many planets, including Haumea, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, also making its own square to this position of Pluto being a very close square there. So uh, these are very strong indications that we have a very transformational time upon us. Um, Pluto with Saturn has been just wild. Um, there's been so much 
uh, that you can think of as major restructuring of one's own life and of the society itself. Um, we see things changing. We, we understand that there's different forces at work, um, forces that want to move in a conservative direction. Very prominent now, as Saturn and uh, Pluto together often indicate, uh, when we have these coming together or when they show up by opposition, there are kind of dire times. The time uh, recently in the past when they were opposite each other was 9-11, across the ascendant and descendant of the United States chart, if you will. So that was very powerful there. Uh, the time that they were previously in conjunction was 1981, and that was a pretty b dire time also. That was when Reagan came in, and there was all that new conservative idea of uh, trying to do things a certain way, trying to influence things a certain way. There was the Iran-Contra scandal at that time, which was that they were trying to influence events in Nicaragua to uh, be in more, align, more aligned with the United States idea of it has to be a certain way, it can't be too socialistic or too left-wing. So all of those things have been happening, and, and now we have the conjunction. So the conjunction here is only a partial conjunction because they're both retrograding now and they're st starting to move backwards and of course Saturn moves much further backwards being closer but eventually they will come back around again and they will meet again at around the 23 degree mark around January of 2020 and then they back away again just like this time of the year next year but <clears throat> they will come back again to conjunct towards the end of this year and, and then leading to January and then towards the end of 2020. In fact, <coughs> the conjunction happens, which is a triple conjunction because Jupiter comes along as well. Uh, that conjunction of these three planets is at its peak around the middle of November. So that will be a very interesting time after the 2020 election when we see the results of that election and we see the possible results of election meddling if we see more of that like we did in the last presidential election. And we will see uh, also the the shape that the transition takes when the Trump administration uh, either loses the election and has to transition and help the transition, which they haven't been so helpful to the Democrats all along, so we'll have to see how that goes. And uh, on the other hand, if Trump should win, that will be an adjustment for uh, the left, you know, to have to face another four years of uh, dealing with a regime that has a different attitude towards them. So that's getting a little into politics, but what I'm trying to say about Jupiter I'm sorry, what I'm trying to say about Pluto and Saturn in conjunction is that they, it is a very powerful um, message for the whole society, a, a powerful symbolism for the whole society to see a great change represented by Pluto and the structure of holding back and conservative empowerment represented by Saturn. And they collide in a certain way and you, you do see uh, eventually um, the transformation that comes through these hard times that we're going through. And then similarly, we have the Pluto-Uranus uh, square, which is just about over, um, but still has another little ways to go. Uh, we feel like it'll be within 10 degrees again. It's, it's 10 degrees right now off of the square. Um, and we'll see that it could be within 10 degrees again next year. So 2020 is the last, the last gasp of the uh, Pluto-Uranus uh, square, which does represent a different idea of revolution and change coming through Uranus rather than Saturn, which means progressive change. And we saw that in the 60s, which was the last conjunction of Pluto and Uranus. And now we see the opening square of that relationship, which means like any quarter moon of the sun and moon uh, lunation cycle represents, it means uh, there's a little bit of tension in the process. It means um, are these ideals that came about in the 60s, are they viable in the society? Because we're testing in the opening square to see whether that can actually be part of the zeitgeist, the, well, or part of the actual um, mainstream culture, whether, that, whether they can survive, whether peace, love, and harmony can su succeed in a world that is full of danger and strife and uh, violence. So, you know, those are the, those are the, those are the, principal polarities and oppositions that we see in the society right now, as you know. And then we want to ask, how does it come to a, ourselves in our own lives? And of course, it's the same. We're, we're all changing. We're all evolving. We're all seeing things in a new way. That's what Uranus is all about, is seeing things in a new way. And is Uranus also magnified in this new moon? Yes, it is. 
Uh, it turns out that Uranus right now at the three degree mark is exactly uh, 45 degrees or semi, semi square away from Neptune. So Neptune and Uranus are both empowered by that very close within a tenth of a degree, within six minutes of a degree uh, connection between them. And we have as well a parallel. So if we right click on Uranus, we'll see the parallels and it's the moon. And uh, Uranus is actually at a declination of 12 degrees and the moon uh, 1142 so it's it's very close uh, parallel about half a degree off and additionally we might think of the fact that um, Eris being s square to Pluto uh, well okay that's that's not really emphasizing that's in a way emphasizing the Uranus Pluto but um, I'm trying to think oh then the additional thing is that that Uranus is actually in connection with both Chiron at four degrees of the next sign over, you know, so they're within just exactly um, a degree or so of being a semi-sextile there. And also we have these new planets. So we have Maki Maki at four degrees opposite Chiron. So that's another very interesting configuration when we look at these very new planets. These are newly named dwarf planets. They were named at the same time as Eris, and, and Pluto was named a dwarf at this time too, which and being involved in nature activities as indicated also by the mythology because Haumea was the goddess, the creation goddess of the Hawaiian Islands and she was representing the fecundity of the flora and fauna of those islands. She could wave a wand and create food which is a very common experience there really and she could um, generate uh, from all over her body. She gave birth from different parts of her body, regenerated as a young woman again. It's a really great symbol for nature itself, the fecundity of nature always coming with new forms and new ideas and new ways of being. And if you have that in you, you're seeing that possibility of a spiritual connection through nature. And you're also seeing that nature itself is a very lovely experience, a very uh, spiritual experience to be able to connect with the natural world takes you beyond uh, human society, human culture, civilization, outside of yourself in that way, and brings you closer, really, to spirit. So these planets are, are actually are very interesting. And the fact that they contribute with Uranus brings Uranus further to the fore. And we might also represent, we might also recognize that Earth issues are very prominent right now as well. And you know, this is not, um, this is not off the top of my head. We can see that uh, there's a lot of environmental concerns about climate change. Hello, friends. Uh, this is a continuation. Um, it turns out we lost the uh, transmission. I'm not sure how that happened. But I was talking about the chart, so we'll go back to it. And um, let's see. What we have <clears throat> is this uh, new moon chart that we've just been discussing. And I was kind of rambling on about um, how the environmental factor is so important in these current skies. And <clears throat> the reason I bring that up is because we have Haumea, which is one of these new planets, exactly opposite to not only Eris, but Eris and Mercury in combination, and making a T-square to Pluto. So this is a rather strong configuration. And that's what I was trying to get into there, that we have situations such as the Green New Deal coming up um, in the, uh, in the new Congress, the new freshman Congress uh, group especially is into that. And a lot of people on the Democrat side are for it, and then some of the senior leadership is not so sure. They think it might be too much too soon, although when I hear that argument, I wonder, because um, everybody seems to think that we just have 10 years or 12 years to reverse climate change, and we sure better be getting on it as instead of stop just stop talking about it and start doing something which brings Eris up again you see that's what Eris is about it's it's the action it's doing it and um, just as an example of some of these new planets in action let's take a look at another chart which I have prepared to show you an additional a uh, little information here and this is of course the new chart for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez she gave her birth data to an astrologer that was interested in, in knowing more about her. Um, so we have a very accurate chart here. This comes from her birth certificate. Born in the Bronx, New York in 1989. She's one of the youngest Congress people I think that's ever been. And a movie just came out on Netflix if you're interested in her ascent. Um, they, they filmed her as she was preparing for what they felt, felt might, might be somehow, somewhat of a historic uh, primary battle where she took on a noted um, 
you know, an incumbent uh, in the Democratic House of Representatives that, that's been there forever and he was a very powerful Democrat. And uh, <clears throat> by George, she won the primary, and so she became the Democratic candidate in a very heavily Democratic district, and so she was elected. So she is in Congress now, and of course she's been uh, on the news a lot. She's kind of a target for the right wing. She's been promoting this thing of the uh, Green New Deal, which is obviously involves a consciousness of these Earth issues. So what we would want to see is, are there connections between her personal planets and these new planets of Haumea and Maki Maki? And also, uh, I'd be interested personally myself in seeing her ears because <clears throat> this is the kind of thing. You know, somebody that has this bee in their bonnet, they just can't do anything but do this. <clears throat> they feel a calling. They feel like they have to come, come, come ahead and by George run for Congress and <clears throat> be involved in this way, she should have a strong Eris in her chart. Well, <clears throat> what you can see is what she does have is also Mars and the Sun in conjunction. So she's a very determined person. She's, you know, could be uh, somebody that if she was angry, she might be hard to deal with. She's an active person. She's probably athletic. I know she's been reputed to uh, be a dancer. <laughs> and um, anyway, she also has that's 15 degrees and 20 degrees, and opposite that at 16 degrees, she does have Eris. So this is a very strong showing of Eris, especially since, look, it connects over as well to 16 degrees of another cardinal sign of Cancer, <clears throat> and that's Chiron. And Eris with Chiron, what would we make of that? Well, there's obviously an awareness of the painful situation of either herself or of the society. Uh, Chiron with Jupiter also, you realize, is somebody that's going to go in a different direction in her beliefs than her culture originally, her parents, for example, originally promoted so that there's this little bit of a painful place with beliefs that you have to go in a different direction, you just have to. And it does make this T-square to Mars. So it's a very strong T-square in her chart, including <clears throat> this new planet, Eris, and meaning her determination, her warrior-like stance, including Chiron, and even Jupiter a little bit wider, and uh, to the Sun and Mars. So that's, that's powerful. And what can we say about these new ones as well, these new, even newer new ones of uh, Haumea and Maki Maki? <clears throat> well, Maki Maki is at five degrees of Virgo, making, again, a square to a personal planet. In this case, it's Venus. So a perfect square, um, only a quarter of a degree different. And that means a love of some of these environmental activist ideas. It very much comes into her conception of what relationship is all about, what uh, her concept of aesthetics is all about and in the 12th house too there's a spiritual connection there as well as of course there is already a spiritual connection with these new ones they do have this spiritual component this component of depth you know you can talk about spirit outside or you can talk about your own depths and what is the deepest part of you the individ individuation uh, process that Carl Jung talked about finding this higher self within you that is really more of an integrated sense of who you really are and these planets speak to depth because they are so far out in the very far reaches of the solar system a final <clears throat> mention would have Haumea Haumea is conjunct Mercury another personal planetary chart it's opposite the moon so <laughs> you, re you really do have what you'd expect to see I mean the activities in this life are so dramatic and she's att attracting so much attention and she's talking about the Green New Deal and we look in the chart <clears throat> and we see reflected in the chart these same things when we understand that these new planets, Haumea and Makimaki, have to do with Earth issues and being um, involved in Earth or, you know, being seeing um, a profound connection to nature and seeing nature as a spiritual path and natural law as the way to go, being fair and being uh, connected to uh, other people. You know, all, all other people are parts of ourselves. You know, we're all parts of the same organism in a certain sense. and. Detecting that and tuning into that is a big is a big factor in this gal's uh, existence. So just just to mention, I'm looking for parallels. Oh, and then it turns out Haumea is also parallel to Jupiter, and contra parallel to Saturn. So there you go. In the I wonder how close they are. So in the software, the time passage software, we can show the parallels and and we can see that the declination is 22 and almost almost 22 and a half, 22.4, and Jupiter is at 22.8, so that's close. And Saturn is 
22.8. Oh, 22.8, 22.8. Very, very interesting. So we have a perfect contraparallel between Saturn and between uh, Jupiter. Jupiter at 22.8, uh, 22 degrees 46 minutes. Saturn 22 degrees 46 minutes. So to the minute that Saturn and Jupiter, it's so interesting because Saturn and Jupiter are considered the social planets. They have to do with being able to um, tune into where the collective is at <clears throat> and seize the moment of the zeitgeist. And she certainly has done that. And then these planets are also connected, as we've just seen, with, uh, with Haumea. So how interesting that the, these are all connected up, including we have Neptune as well. And Neptune speaks to vision, and she has Neptune and Saturn, which means bringing vision into practical reality, practical terms. She's probably somebody that would be interested in mythology as a, a way of uh, dealing with philosophical issues. You know, she's bringing those those ideas from the beyond, from the otherworldly, uh, other planes of existence, into this plane by her activities. So I think that's a very interesting chart, isn't it? And especially when you look at these new planets. Now getting back to the new moon, which we were talking about, <clears throat> we got into the fact that um, the outer planets are all stimulated in this chart. I was mentioning more Uranus and Pluto, but of course you recognize that Uranus and um, Neptune are quite well connected, being exactly 45 degrees to the tenth of a degree. And uh, as well, Neptune and uh, Venus make an angle because Venus is uh, within a degree of being a semi-sextile to the Neptune. Neptune is also contraparallel to Venus and to nearby uh, Chiron as well. So <clears throat> Chiron speaks to our inner woundedness, um, usually comes from early childhood trauma that is poorly integrated, which nobody was uh, able to do it at the time. So Chiron is called the Wounded Healer, and it's been uh, written about. Melanie Reinhardt has a terrific book called uh, Chiron on the Healing Journey. So <clears throat> these are um, all kind of beyond planets. They are be transpersonal in nature. They take us to the collective levels of what's happening in the society, thinking of the society as, a, as an entity that can evolve just like we are its individual atoms individual cells of the body of the collective and we're evolving along with it in our own way and we're contributing in our own way. So <clears throat> it's very interesting to see these configurations that are coming down right now including the opposition to Jupiter including a strong Neptune and it does tell us that there's a certain amount of hope and faith and optimism that is part of this zeitgeist right now this month that we're living through right now my, the month of May and also that there's a certain amount of deception because we do have the other idea of Neptune being, um, you know, it's not part of the physical plane, it's of the beyond. It, music and dance contribute to, the, to our understanding of these beyond uh, areas and to the spiritual depths that we all participate in. Um, and one factor of, of Neptune is therefore there's a certain amount of disconnect with the physical world and we do see the possibility of ungrounded fantasy kind of taking over and it could be fantasies of ideal you know solutions it could be evil fantasies as well it could be illusions that we that we ha carry it could be self-deception it could be outright so I think that's enough for now and we'll transition back to um, the other view <clears throat> so I just want to leave you with some of those ideas that you know, it's important to recognize, which we can by looking at the mirror of astrology that tells us so much about our own culture, what's happening in our culture, and also our own self, you know, what is what is going on and by using this kind of x-ray or MRI to take a look at the psychological DNA within us, um, where we're, um, where we're, where we have our strengths, where we have our um, outer planet significations which bring us further to the transpersonal and, and further to recognition of of how we can participate and in, in the cultural movements that we're in the midst of and how we can kind of seize the reins you know you don't have to feel helpless because you have your own power within yourself to choose what you believe what you want to articulate where you take your stand and once you've done all that you can do you feel satisfied this is at least I've been up to something that I believe in that I believe I can promote as helpful. So finding out where you have these things in your 
own chart is very important, very interesting, and I know most of you, since you're tuned into this, are studying astrology or interested in astrology. We do have tools to help. Um, the Time Passage of Software has been widely recognized as being a very easy way to get into it. The interpretations are pretty darn good. They do uh, cover all the planets, uh, except for Haume and Makimaki, which we're still working on, but the Eris interpretations are in there. And we're having the standard edition, um, I believe, on sale this, this month. Uh, is it 25%? 25% off, as Leslie just confirmed. So <clears throat> we do have that to offer, as well as um, just getting on the site. You can get a report for yourself. You can learn about <clears throat> these planets that we're talking about all the time. So I guess that's it for now, and uh, wishing you a happy May month, and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck in dealing with, you know, it's like surfing, isn't it? Trying to keep your balance amidst these changing times. So see you next time. Have a good time. Have a good couple of weeks.